guys, my name is Dan and I'm Ling and welcome to our podcast. In today's episode, we're going to talk about one of the hottest literature works in Vietnam in recent years and how it can actually be a game changer for the Vietnamese publication industry. You guys, Ling and I are talking about an adult graphic novel series named The Holy Dragon Imperator, or often known as Truyen Thuyết Long Thần Tuong in Vietnamese. Okay, a quick note to the audience, during our podcast, all of the Vietnamese names are going to be said in the Vietnamese way, and that is family name first, and the middle name, and finally given name. Okay. So before analyzing the impact of the comics on Vietnam society, shall we have a quick glance at uh, what is Long Thần Tuong Dan? Sure thing. So Long Thần Tuong is an alternate Vietnamese history graphic novel created by Phong Dung Comics on the background of the Chen Dynasty's second resistance against the Mongolian army between the year 1282 and 1284. The saga depicts layers of political schemes between two nations on the verge of, a, of an actual war, the novel chronicles in two timelines, the modern and the past, and the past timeline is recalled by characters in the modern world, where the events revolve around the six-year-old girl. Okay, so that is the main theme of Long Thần Tuong, but there is an interesting fact, and that is the story was actually debuted back in 2004 in Chuyện Chang Che. Comics for Youth magazine. However, because of the magazine cancellation, the project was put to an end. But this could not stop Nguyễn Thanh Phong and Nguyễn Khánh Dương, the two authors of Long Thần Tuong, from bringing back their baby. And 10 years later, Long Thần Tuong is considered to be the most successful comic books in Vietnam history. So the plan is for Phong Dung Comics to publish totally five volumes. And until 2017, they have successfully introduced Volume 1, 2, and 3. And we would like to give the audience a quick review of what happened in these volumes. So, a big spoiler alert, guys. As Sling mentioned it before, a six years old girl is telling the story of the past. Her name is Ai Mi, and she is not just any ordinary little girl. Just like her dad, Mi's memory seal the past mystery, the kind that many people are trying desperately to get, and just like her dad, me might die if any more is to be revealed. Through Mi's words, we learn of the existence of Lam, an orphan boy who is planning to steal at the wedding of a rich and powerful local family, but becomes the only eyewitness to the case of murder and stolen bride. However, no matter how hard people try to interrogate Lam, he says nothing. When held captive, Lam befriends an uncanny one-eyed man named Kian. Worried for her daughter Seti, the mother comes to see Lam in the middle of the night. In exchange for information, she agrees to help Lam to escape from jail. And there it is revealed that the true mastermind behind it all was... Lam! Surprise herself. Continuing in the second volume, it is told that Tian, Fang, and two other prisoners are taking shelter in a temple. From here, the bigger picture is starting to show. This is no ordinary temple. The head monk here and Tian are actually spies, working for Chen Hung Dao, the king uncles, and a very famous Vietnamese general. And Tian's job is actually to look out for Lung. Why? What is so special about this boy? All we know is that he is the link to an old myth about a powerful, mysterious dragon imperator appear when Mongolian first tried to invade Dai Viet, aka Vietnam at the time. And while Long is still clueless and in hiding, in the capital of this country, tension arising as the Chinese ambassador is visiting, bringing sign of an end to the fragile peace. In case you guys might be confused, at that time, the Mongolian has already successfully conquered China. In Volume 3, we now learn more about the true identity of Lam. After being kidnapped from the temple, Lam is brought to see Chen Iktak, a member of the Chen royal family, who is said to be very talented and wise. Here, it is revealed that Lam is not at all common. His family is rich and somehow has linked to royalty. For some unknown reasons, his family was killed. Only he could escape thanks to the help of a servant who turned out to be working for Chen Hung Dao. Now, interestingly, Chen Itak is portrayed as a very kind, fun, and somewhat mysterious gentleman. 
So it might come as a surprise for those who don't know Vietnamese history well. Actually, he is written down in history as a traitor who sold out his country. Okay. So back to the storyline. It turns out that Long knew Chen Ikdak and called him uncle when he was a little boy. So Long decided to stay at Ikdak's place, and this clearly doesn't make Chen Hengdao very happy, as he and Ikdak are having some issues. However, there is nothing that the general can do right now, as his hands are full with the Mongolian ambassador and with Lan. Yes, that's right. The stolen bride is a part of a much bigger plan of the general. Although not much has been revealed yet, fans are speculating that Lan can actually become the future Mongolian queen. In the present timeline, Amy is brought back to her hometown so that her grandfather can find ways to save her life. Meanwhile, signs are showing that it is possible one of the characters in the story may be alive, trying to control the order of the story, distorting the thread, and in the worst case, killing Amy. So what is real? What is fiction? What is the truth behind it all? All of the questions can only be answered once we hold volume 4 and 5 of Long Tung in our hands. So cliffhanger! Sorry guys. Okay, so that is what has happened so far. And as the audience can feel, this is not at all a boring old history lesson. This is a thriller, a mystery with a dash of humor and fantasy. Long Tan Tung has totally brought a brand new vibe to the Vietnamese comics. Yes, as people in Vietnam can see, the comic sector there is now dominated by Japanese manga. Conan, Doraemon, Attack on Titan, One Piece, Naruto, I can go on and on and on. I'm not implying that this is bad, but rather I'm saying that the work of Vietnamese writer has to step it up because they no longer meet the reader's demand. There have been some famous Vietnamese comics such as Thần Đông Đất Việt, Vietnamese Genius, and Hisman, but both of them fell short in the long run, losing its audience. Yes, one of the reasons why Long Thần Tường has been so successful for the past few years is because of the work that is put into it. The plot is fun, thrilling, and interesting, which making the audience coming back for more. Interestingly, Long Thần Tường is only for those who are above 15. The writer of the novel wants to redefine the Vietnamese definition of comic books. That is, it is not only for children. The first gen generation of Doraemon is all grown up, and they want something more intelligent and complex. And a graphic novel can be just that. Now, we are talking about graphic novel. It's not enough just thinking about the plot. We have to discuss the drawing of the novel as well. Exactly. Now. I have read many, many comic books, and they often fall into three categories. First of all, the Japanese manga with big eyes. Secondly, the Western comic, which much resemble the real world. And thirdly, the cartoony vibe with super adorable character design. But Long Tan Tung is different. The artistic of it is very unique and different from anything that is out there right now. It's such a shame that our audience cannot see the novel drawing. Okay, so Fong. Uh, the main illustrator of this novel has a very strong sense of style. I've seen some of his other work like Satu de Meng Mu, the murderer with a pills filled head, which is also very famous in Vietnam. And right away I can tell who is the mastermind behind this. The brushwork in Long Thần Tương is very organic, almost casual, and this brought a sense of rusticness, a vibe of old time. And it is almost obvious that he draw his inspiration from the Vietnamese traditional painting. Not to mention the amount of detail that was put into it. Every single character in it is carefully designed so that the reader could truly travel through time back to the Chen Dynasty. Phong Zong Comics had actually invited special researcher Mito Chen Quang Duc, author of a book Ngan Nam A Mu, A Thousand Years of Capes and Ropes, to be the history advisor. Okay, so the book was a big commercial success. It was the first Vietnamese made comic book ever to sold 10,000 copies for the first volumes, providing that there is room for comics to grow in Vietnam. Furthermore, the novel has even gained international recognition as it has won silver in the 9th International Manga Award in 2016.
Another reason why it's okay to say that Long Thanh Tung is a game changer for Vietnamese publication industry is because of the way the book was introduced to the public. Normally, writers don't have enough resources to print or to sell a book on their own. Therefore, they need the help of a publisher. And because of financial reasons, a publisher would always try their best to make the work appeal to the mass, to maximize their profit. Now, this is not a bad thing, but it does a lot of times compromise the quality or the content of the original work. Adult contents may be deleted. Controversial topics may be edited. Swear words may not even be allowed because of the strict censorship. And for a lot of times, these are actually what makes the book so great. Starting from the wish to create independently, from and Zhuang from their own company, and it's called, wait for it, from Zhuang Comics. And the company tried to get the money needed for the project through crowdfunding. Now, crowdfunding is a relatively new term in Vietnam before Long Thanh Tuong. Basically, crowdfunding is a method of raising capital through the collective effort of friends, family, customer, and individual investors. This approach tap into the collective effort of a large pool of individuals, primarily online via social media and crowdfunding platform, and leverage their network for greater reach and exposure. From tapping into a wider investor pool to enjoy more flexible fundraising options, there are a number of benefits to crowdfunding over traditional methods. First of all, like mentioned before, Creators of the project can have much more control over their content. They don't have to wait for permission of the investor or the publication house because there is none. And all who have donated are on the same page as the creators. Secondly, crowdfunding can guarantee that their audience for this product is going to sell. If not, there will be no money to do it in the first place. And finally, by using a crowdfunding platform like Fundable or in long term Tung case, Comicola, they have a set to thousands of accredited investors who can see, interact with, and share their fundraising campaign. This is a great PR strategy. Okay, so crowdfunding is excellent for the Vietnamese publication climate because until now, even with the age restriction, there are still many rules and regulations such as the unspoken rule about not to mention anything that can cause political or historical controversy. Through crowdfunding, artists can express themselves and their opinion more freely, paint a more vivid picture of the Vietnamese people's thoughts and feelings, therefore bring out a much truer, more diverse and colorful Vietnam that has been misunderstood by foreign friends for so long because of our different political system. Ever since Long Thanh Tung's successful crowdfunding project, more opportunities were made for other Vietnamese comic book writers. People are starting to open up to comics and to Vietnamese literature in general, as they now know it is just as good as a work from foreign authors. Orange or work or cute, bad luck. Project Icon, just to name a few successful and popular comics in recent time in Vietnam. And all thanks to men and women of Lam Thanh Tuong. The future is still very bright for the Lam Thanh Tuong fans, as Volume 4 and 5 are on the way, and there's even a rumor of a movie adaptation. It is even more exciting that Lam Thanh Tuong introduced an English version, and it is being sold on Amazon right now. And just in December 2017, it is announced that a Spanish publication house has bought the right to publish Lam Thanh Tuong in Spanish. In conclusion, it is undeniable that Vietnamese comic has lived under the shadow of Japanese manga for a long time. The reason is obvious. J-manga at that time has reached its peak with all of its variety, creativity, vibrancy, and drawing technique compared to Vietnamese plain plot, simple two-shot framework. It is no wonder why readers in Vietnam instantly embraced Doraemon and Dragon Ball. Just like Dan said, 20 years ago, it seemed to be an uphill battle for Vietnamese young immature comics to compete with Japanese fully grown counterpart. There is no lack of efforts made by younger generation of writers to draw, write, and create comics since then. However, the product still falls in the trap of either heavily influenced by Japanese drawing style or using the plot that was used before by other Japanese and American writers. 
saying that we are not diminishing of the achievement of Vietnamese comic. Ling and I are just saying that there are hope and that hope has been confirmed by Long Thanh Tuong. But one good work is not enough to help the whole Vietnamese comic industry. Let's join hands and be supportive to all of the creators and the dreamer out there. Because it is the dreamer who will ultimately bring the beauty of Vietnam to the world. And that is the time for our podcast. Thank you for listening. And if you like what you have heard, make sure to check out Long Thanh Tuong for yourself. The English and Vietnamese version of the comics are both available on Amazon. See you guys later. Goodbye! Goodbye.